We're headed to Crystal River. This is what we're looking for. It's a complex, known to be one of the longest occupied ancient sites in Florida. Gary. Hi. Justin Fornell. Nice to meet you. Emiliano, great to meet you. Nice to meet you. Gary Daniels is an expert on the Maya. He spent decades exploring Maya ruins in eight different countries on three continents. If anyone knows about Maya settlements, it's him. So Justin and I have been on the trail of the Maya. We believe the Maya might have made it from the Yucatan to Florida, but we haven't found any tangible evidence of a Maya settlement yet. And we're very excited to hear about the Crystal River site and, and that you believe it's connected to the Maya. Yes, I believe this is one of the first Mayan sites built here in Florida. Wow. And why do you believe that? The earliest archaeologists in 1903, they all believed, based on the architecture and some of the artifacts, that they were too similar to the Maya to, to have any other explanation than that the people who built this place were the Maya. What are some of these Maya elements? The Maya were so obsessed with astronomy, they aligned their cities with solar points, with equinoxes, with solstices, and you have those alignments here. This is the earliest place outside of Mexico. You have all those things. Wow. According to Gary, because the Maya worshiped the sun as a godlike figure, there are three major structures. The temple mounds, stone monuments called stela, and step pyramids were always built to line up with the sun during solstices and equinoxes. If Crystal River was a Maya settlement, these alignments would have to be present. They were definitely using the same principles to design Crystal River that they use at the Mayan sites. Wow. wow. We'd love to look at this site. I can show you those alignments now, so let's go. So this site contains two stone stele, as well as temple mounds, which all appear to be Maya in origin. So this is Mound A. This is the largest temple mound on the site. Wow, look at that. This is exactly what the sites in Mexico look like before they're reconstructed. Right. And it's from this location where you would see the alignment with Stila 1 for the uh, summer solstice sunrise. Wow. According to Gary, when seen from above, Mound A and Stila 1 form a solar map which points directly at the sunrise on the day of the summer solstice. We have one piece of evidence that aligns with a celestial body. I think we need at least one more to make sure that what we're talking about is really pre-planned, precise positioning of the architecture. OK, let's go to Stila 1. Let's have a look. This is Stila 1. There are two of these on site. It aligns with Mound A, but it also aligns with Stila 2, which gives the winter solstice sunrise alignment. So this rock has two different alignments within this location. That's pretty incredible. Combining the different points of the Temple Mound with Stila 1 and Stila 1 with Stila 2, it's clear the site was built to align with the solstices matching perfectly to Maya architecture. You see all these clear structures that are measurements of the stars, all of these elements of Maya thought, yeah. but what's missing? What do you always find in ancient Maya cities? We're looking for that step pyramid, which is universal. Exactly. If this is a Maya site, where is the step pyramid? So right here is Mount H. It's a very linear mound with a wide ramp coming down from the top of the mound. And it's the first one built anywhere outside of Mexico. Wow. Now, what's interesting about this, typically in the Maya world, when you had a linear mound like this, yeah. you would then have a stepped pyramid to the west of it. And we just don't find one here. If this is a Maya settlement, it must be out there. Where's due west of here? Due west is that direction. Up and see if we can find it ourselves. Do it. Let me pull out a map. So we go directly to west. To west. We'd end up on what looks like some kind of island. Yeah. The Linear Mound site lands on the edge of the Crystal River, but just west across the water lies Roberts Island. So close yet so far, you know what I mean? 